Thanks. So we'll move on down the agenda. I would happily approve a motion to approve the April minutes as written, unless somebody suggests that we need edits. I have no edits. Uh, um, I emailed Jared, but uh, my name needs to be spelled properly. And, uh, <laughs> Did I do that? It's wrong. Yeah. And Commissioner Senegal was at the meeting and he's not listed there. We're going to chat to your how to spell your name with yours. Go ahead. Yeah. The thing is that okay. That to explain to everybody, I I worked with a guy named Don Leslie at North Eugene High School, and that's how he spelled his name. And I'm getting dirty. Just saying. Okay, I should just so move. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, good to go. Uh, announcement, Terry. All right, I got a couple. Um, we were able to meet with Mother Lainey Allen at uh, St. Matthew's Episcopal Church, which is doing all sorts of great things. Um, they are the, the church on River Road that has the food pantry. And what they're engaging in right now is another way to uh, intersect uh, the un unhoused population. And so what they're doing is some transitional housing on their site, um, some mobile housing for now. And it'll start with two, I believe it may be three units. Um, and there's some information that um, is actually over on the table. For those of you uh, joining us online, I believe there will be a newsletter. Gary will send out information in the newsletter and that should be going out. But there's uh, great information. There's kind of some facts, some frequently asked questions about, you know, um, you know, how will it be handled? And St. Matt's is also interested in a couple of community members being part of their oversight committee that will be working, um, engaging and, and planning and that sort of thing. So if you're interested, if you're really passionate, um, there is information on how to contact um, Mother Lady and so that's really exciting. And then secondly, I'm super jazzed about this too. Um, we are planning a picnic at Aubrey Park on Sunday, August 6th. And we have uh, bands and musicians that are gonna come out and join us. And it's gonna be, you know, you can bring your picnic. We may, um, Kona Ice Truck may be there. We're engaging with some um, food trucks, one or two, we'll see. Um, but it's just going to be a really fun event. It's going to be a free event um, for community engagement. So if there are neighbors that you have wanted to say hi to and wanted to get to know, uh, invite them and join us from 1 to 4 on Sunday on 6. More information to come. Mm -hmm. Jerry Finnegan. I uh, just wanted to remind people, if you're not aware, Ryan Meadows has for a number of a lot of years had a neighborhood sale probably the largest sale in the in the city about 200 houses that they, oh they have everyone has a garage sale at the same time and ryan mills is uh is down by me which is uh between corbell and, and arrowhead <clears throat> Maryland street and uh and so that goes uh, this saturday from uh from eight o'clock to four o'clock so so if you're interested in walk if you can yeah. Or if you're going to take your stuff, you're going to get it. It's probably a cherry. It's a lot of fun. But it's, it's a lot of it's fun. fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And the, uh, the library, the volunteer library will have a, will have a booth there. They, they, they allow a few of us to, to join. Mm -hmm. Great. So updates. Neighborhood plan form at North Eugene. So everybody who was there. There were lots of us. There were probably 50 participants that went pretty swimmingly. So I will remind everybody that uh, not opposing something is not the same as supporting something. And uh, we need everybody who has comments, good, bad, uh, ambivalent about the neighborhood plan to get on the Engage Eugene webpage. Click on River Road Santa Clara Neighborhood Plan and take the survey because we need to hear from neighbors and have that uh, feedback collated and uh, have it come back to inform our board deliberations, which will be June 27th. So it's important to, for all of us who have been thinking about it for a very long time to also 
take that survey. Uh, Peter Thurston is not here to talk. Uh, at Looper Cemetery that was open during Memorial Day. I went over there myself, and they had a, they had a number of, of tables set up and stuff, and, and uh, some music going on. So, excellent. NLC report. I didn't. I was not able to attend. Okay. Uh, anything from the time before that you would like to prize us of? Um, the the time before, if I remember correctly, was um, was a, a city kind of uh, overview of, of, of things that were going on, and um, they they spent a lot of time really kind of trying to hash out the the funding that we get from the neighborhood associations, how we can save that because the city is going to claw back a lot of funding. So that was a lot of it was not very informative. In general, but um, just about the city's uh, um, budget plans and the shortfalls. That was a uh, uh, big, big topic. I think the uh, city is planning on reducing outreach funding for neighborhoods by 30% for the next year. So there is a, an effort to quantify the, which brings me to hours, volunteer hours, but to quantify the work that neighborhood associations put in and uh, express that the value the city receives for the money they put in is probably far greater than the amount of money they spend. And so that brings us back always to reporting your volunteer hours, which will all the year's hours are due to be reported by the third week of June. So everybody who hasn't submitted hours and has done voluntary work, please submit them to Jerry Finnegan before the third week of June. So, uh, and in relation to that, our, uh, we asked for matching funding from Lane County for outreach for the next year. And um, both River Road Community Organization um, co-chairs and myself decided to ask for 30% less than this is sort of the same matching of what we expect from the city, even though we're going to ask the city to hold them harmless and give us 100%, we don't actually expect that that will be the outcome. Mm -hmm. So we figured the safest bet was to ask for what we think we're going to get from the city to match. And so uh, Commissioner Seneca did ask for that, and I haven't heard back yet what the outcome was, but I uh, he seemed very positive. So there's that. Social justice committee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Santa Clara and River Road Social Justice Committee partnered to make cookies, buy cookies, bring granola bars and brownies to North Eugene's Black Student Union for I think it was their last meeting of the year. I think they have many of their last meeting. Oh, that's true. Um, and we um, we got a response from Ian Christensen that the kids were really excited. This is a tough time of year when everybody's pushing for the last days and anticipation of summer and apprehension of summer. So it was really cool. And, it, and we had, she said that they really appreciate that the neighborhood, the adults in the neighborhood are aware of them and their and their concerns and are thinking about them and extending to them. That means a lot to them. You know, she said. Right, thanks. And um, the community garden, Peter's not here for that. All right. Know, maybe, maybe Tim has. Tim Foundation. I uh, I don't know too much about the garden, so I can't fill in for Peter. But it is at the Episcopal Church that Terry was just talking about, uh, where the Food for Land County event is going to be. Um, the Santa Clara Community Foundation, mark your calendars, please, for July 22nd, when we are having a garden party fundraising event in uh, the north part of town, just off East Beacon Drive. So um, part of that event will be a silent auction. So we are looking to uh, solicit um, items or services for that auction. Uh, there'll probably be some door prizes. There will be some libations. There will be music. There will be community. We'll have a little program. Um, so it should be a fun time. And it's, you know, in the afternoon. Um, 
from from four until the evening or so, um, and plenty of food. And if anyone wants to help out in our planning, we're we're still looking for volunteers. We have quite a few now. Um, this last Saturday, we had a work party at uh, Hellman Landing County Park. And so we're nearly finished with the uh, refurbishing, rehabilitating the entrance there. We've got a lot of invasives removed and native shrubs planted. Um, we had about 11 people this time and uh, the county has been very supportive. And I try to visit there once a week. And every time I go down, I, I interact with at least uh, four people, sometimes many more. And um, and they're all excited about what's happening there. And they've, uh, you know, as they're walking their dogs in, they're putting, uh, they're signing on our, our sheet to get information, to get on our mailing list. So that's all good stuff for the community uh, outreach, as well as the rehabilitation of the park natural area. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Kate, am I missing something? Do we have any updates on the schoolhouse project yet? No, the insurance agent is uh, hopeful that he's going to have insurance for us. And uh, Carolyn Burke was scheduled to meet with me two weeks ago, but she had to go back east because her father was dying. So we are in a little bit of a circling pattern, but we're moving forward ever so slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, that's pretty much that. Uh, if anybody has any questions about the foundation, um, let us know. If there's any interest at all in becoming a board member, it's not very onerous, but we'll uh, we'll <laughs> expect you to to volunteer some some uh, labor into our various projects that we're we're building and growing. Um, so please get in touch and become a board member. We, we could use more. We have the, the minimum of five and we can have up to 15. So, you know, it's really a community effort. So, feel, and you don't have to be a member or resident of Santa Clara to be a board member. Um, but you, if you have any skills at all, or even just an interest, uh, get a hold of one of us and uh, we'll get you an application form. Thanks. Great. Land use report, uh, one lot on Heisen, just south of Travis, scheduled for annexation. River Road, right away annexation from Wedgwood to Beacon and the first 300 feet of Irvington west of River Road uh, that we have heard about twice now from the county is moving forward. And uh, there's a proposed development at the end of Quiet Lane off of Ferndale, a 1.23 acre lot which at this moment is undeveloped and the property owner wants to do five clusters of four to eight units and do cluster housing. So no house um, larger than 900 square feet per unit, all one bedroom, one bath, sort of a middle housing uh, experiment for them, all single story. So that should theoretically fit, you know, like snug, snugly into the, existing housing. The St. Vincent de Paul Green Lane apartments are moving forward. If you recall, it's uh, 10 one bedroom units in a community building. So the 10 one bedroom units are in two separate buildings and the third building is a community building and then they have parking in a little community uh, outside area. Um, the lot on the east side of Scenic Drive, right at Spring Creek, with a very old house and the barn and back, is going to be divided into three legal lots. And 450 Huntsacre uh, is uh, being annexed and partitioning one parcel to three. And then the last and most exciting thing is that the Austin Foundation gave a grant to help develop the spray play feature for the Santa Clara Community Park, which is scheduled to begin in 2024. So that will move that higher up. It was not going to be phase one, and it's getting enough funding that hopefully it will be phase one. So that's land use. Any other updates from folks? A small one, just a plug for our locals. Um, Right next to uh, the, the navigation center is Cow's Donuts. Tomorrow is National Donut Day. <laughs> My plug. Who knows? Every day is Donut Day. But it's national, so support the favorite donut. 
Uh, and I'll just remind everybody that the process for the community organization to make a recommendation on the neighborhood plan is that uh, we're waiting for feedback from all the people who fill out the feedback form and the two neighborhood forms and the community form that we attended. We'll come back sometime around June 20th. We'll be able to review that and we'll post all that feedback information on the website. Then there's a board, uh, Santa Clara Community Organization board meeting on um, Tuesday the 27th at 7 p.m. It'll be at 1250 Irving 10. It will be viewable uh, via Zoom from the comfort of your own home. There will be public comment, open public comment at the very beginning if people want to give any feedback. And then uh, it will be um, witness only for the deliberations. So the board will deliberate towards a recommendation of some kind. And then uh, the general meeting in July is an opportunity for the general membership to either affirm or overturn the decision of the board. And that will be the process by which SACA will make a recommendation. And that recommendation goes to the community advisory committee and then the community advisory Three committee makes its own recommendation to the two planning commissions, and then they put it through their grist mill and they make their recommendations to the elected bodies, and on and on it goes. Is ours just a would it be a, a letter to them with that? Uh, yeah, I think we'll just figure out ver verbiage of what you know. I assume there might be given the feedback, there might be recommended changes or alterations or additions or you know it's not like a yet yeah, thumbs up thumbs down it could be far more fine grained than that and uh you know like we'd like you to advocate for this one thing that isn't represented but people really feel strongly about as well as this and that yeah. so yeah okay and jerry finnegan you wanted to schedule bylaws review yeah, this, uh, I'm not sure how it's going to fit in. There's uh, the, the bylaws committee met and, and has a number of changes recommended for the bylaws. They're all pretty much just housekeeping stuff, uh, but uh, but we need to to somehow schedule it somewhere down the line. Uh, the board needs to pass and then it needs to be be brought to the general meeting before we pass it on to the city for review and, and approval. Mm -hmm. With a the maybe the bylaws committee bring up a recommendation and say here's our proposed we standard. Have, we already yeah. have a we already have yeah. a recommendation, but so you just haven't had a chance to propose it yet. Gotcha. So did you want to send that out to the board by email or what's your proposed idea? Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, if uh, if things go real smoothly at our board meeting in uh, June, July, June, this June. Oh, that one. Yeah. yeah okay. Then maybe we could just tack it on to the end of that and get the board approval on that, and then and then maybe set it for uh, August or something for a general meeting. Okay. All right. And looking forward to a newsletter, Jerry Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did. Great work creating a newsletter that will be coming to your mailbox extra soon. Anything else for the good of the order? Any recommended programs? Yes. Yes. Can I add something about the picnic and concert? Please. Because I didn't ask for um, if you are very interested and want to be a part of planning or coordinating or helping out the day of, please uh, say so and I will. <laughs> <laughs> send something if you're if you're engaging online you can send something to the community organization and i would be happy to contact you but it's going to be fun it's going to be and if you know anything about how we incorporate power at aubrey park i am chasing a lot of bicycles <laughs> chasing, yeah yeah exactly i am i am chasing that down but if you if you have a in that would be awesome because that's where we're we're implicated for Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think he brought his battery for Oh. Yeah. He, 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 he talked to us. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, 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 it's it's I not an easy it. solution. We've tried mm -hmm. for years to get some power out there. And we did have the uh, 
the uh, portable power people come out one year and did that. But I typically use, um, I have a couple small amps, you know, really small, just for like for a single person that are battery powered. And I do have a solar generator that's a little bigger part, but I, it sounds like you're going to have a band and that, that would never cover it. So, yeah, a Sorry. couple of four and five people bands. So we would need doesn't, doesn't you have a mobile? That's what I had heard. And if anybody knows who to contact at eWeb, I will chase them down. And how about Sophie Carlson, our board member from our area? Yeah, she was out there at the Walmart uh -huh. festival. That yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. I'll, I'll send you her. Cool. Thank you guys. I really, really appreciate it because. Having a sound person who has power so that bands can plug in would be great. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks everybody for showing up. You make our neighborhood great. See you next month. Thank you.